Hollywood clearly does not understand women. The industry has been trying really hard to pander to us, co-opting franchises and releasing movies and TV shows all with female heroes front and center, while the men quiver, grovel, and cower in the background. But it's not working. Each of these releases has been met by subpar box office numbers and fast dwindling viewership. And to make matters worse, once priceless IPs like Disney, Star Wars, and the MCU are now eliciting apathetic yawns from their audience at best and scorn at their worst. But even with these disastrous results, Hollywood has no plans to change their women equals good and men equals bad approach to story writing. In fact, they are willing to go down with this rapidly sinking ship rather than accept the alternative. More female representation on screen really isn't a bad thing, but from the common character traits of the recent female heroes, one thing is very clear. The writers and creators don't like women. Feminine traits like empathy, patience, compassion, and gentleness are either never showcased nor valued, but almost every character is stoic, arrogant, impatient, and immensely powerful, either physically or supernaturally, or both. All traits that are typically considered masculine. The female heroes are rarely, if ever, wrong, and their hero's journey requires neither growth nor any improvement in order for them to be triumphant. Usually, if they are lacking anything, it's a slight lack of self-belief, no doubt sewed in them by a male-run society. So the female hero has no feminine traits and doesn't need to undergo the hero's journey. Her only struggle really is dealing with the machismo and utter incompetence of whatever unfortunate male who happens to be in her story. The men, on the other hand, are bumbling, fumbling idiots who are often figuratively or literally kicked in the balls. They are often shown as emotional, sentimental, and caring. But again, these traits are played for laughs rather than values meant to balance out the aggressive female heroes. So the morals of these stories are simple. Men are bad. And since society has been built by men, society also is bad. Women are perfect. Except for all the traits that make them feminine. Those should be rejected and can be embodied by men, but women have to be like men. But men are not allowed to be like men. Also, remember how men are bad? But male traits in women is great. If you're confused, don't worry. The writers and creators are confused too. The point is that audiences aren't interested in this trash. Every Disney project where they try to flip the script is embroiled in controversy, and once promising TV shows like Loki and Ahsoka are now sitting in a trash heap where only YouTubers go looking for material to review for their latest content. And yes, I'm aware that that's a self-burn. And yet, not so long ago, men and women everywhere were lining up rimming with excitement to watch the newest installment in movies with strong male heroes. Is it possible that women were not feigning interest, wondering when the hell they were going to get a female version of Iron Man, but instead actually enjoyed watching a good movie with a strong male hero? The idea that women want men to be weak, to step aside, to avert their gaze, and to bow down at the sight of them is just so wrong. So if there is confusion, which there clearly is, let me be clear. Women don't want this. We don't want emasculated, broken men who are insecure and fearful at the sight of us, who are more than happy to sit on the sidelines while the women make all the decisions and take all the actions. We absolutely do not want this. Many women everywhere are all too familiar with what happens when they build partnerships with these types of men. When women are in relationships with men who take no initiative, who constantly need to be led, need to be told what to do, need to be dominated just to function day to day, there is nothing worse for a woman's happiness. We don't want servants to rule over. We want men, real men, in all their strength and glory, self-assured and powerful, charming and cool, caring and giving and protective. That's what we want. That's why when movies had masculine heroes like that, it wasn't just the men who were excited to watch. The women loved it too because it reminded us of what we want in our men. And if Hollywood truly understood that or even cared about that, they would stop presenting every male as the most pathetic version of masculinity possible. But they won't stop because female empowerment is not really the goal. I mean, if it were, they would realize that weak men are actually making women unhappy. But pretending to care about female representation is just the top palatable decoy layer of their agenda cake. The writers and creators of these movies and TV shows are not pro-women, they're anti-men. So the real motivation is their vindictive desire to destroy men. And the really sad part is that it's working. But what else can we expect when men 
everywhere are constantly being told that they are toxic just for existing. Constantly taunted that the world is made for them and by them and if they struggle or suffer that it's their own damn fault and need to figure it out alone. But also told that all the traits that make them masculine have no place in our society unless they are being embodied by women of course. And all the heroes that men everywhere looked up to have been torn down, stripped, and humiliated. When confronted with the terrible stats of male suffering, there are plenty of people everywhere rejoicing that men are finally getting their comeuppance. And for what? What sins exactly have these men committed that they deserve this? But it's these types of vindictive people that have for some time now infiltrated Hollywood writer and executive boardrooms with their sole goal to bring men to their knees with a stiletto planted firmly on their necks. This isn't about empowerment. This is about domination. What, no smile? Ugh.